Right, so you should all have access to a Blackboard and the uh, left-hand side has the syllabus, it also has the agenda. Let's take a look at the agenda. So this is the uh, proposed uh, timeline and topics that I'm planning on covering uh, this semester, uh, which I'd like to share uh, with you. Uh, so, so this week, uh, week, week one, uh, it's mostly uh, presenting the uh, course, what it's all about. Uh, we'll we'll, we'll uh, talk about some of the, um, you know, what is software engineering, uh, some of the history of, uh, of dealing with the chaotic uh, aspects of, de of working in teams, uh, what, you know, what solutions have we considered, you know, way back from uh, waterfall methodologies all the way to today, you know, most folks use agile. Uh, so what has been the impetus of, of, uh, of different, uh, pro uh, different ways of dealing with uh, chaos um, where, where we are right now and perhaps where you might be considering going. You know, certainly, uh, Agile is not, the, is not the end of the story. Uh, it's just the current uh, methodology that uh, is popular today. But certainly, uh, you, you folks could uh, come up with even better uh, ways of organizing uh, teams and dealing with, uh, uh, with you know, hard problems to solve. So we'll talk about some of those methodologies. Uh, we'll talk about some of the architectures. Uh, we'll also talk about setting up a development environment. Uh, so the first assignment today uh, that will go out today, uh, it will be due next Tuesday at midnight. It will be to set up an environment. Okay? Set up a hello world a web application, deploy it to uh, a Heroku, uh, and then, and then um, share that in a repository, in a GitHub repository. So to, um, uh, to commit and push this to a repository. And you'll be submitting on Blackboard those two things, right? A, a, a link to your hosted uh, application on Heroku and a link to your GitHub repository, right? We'll also ask you to invite all the TAs and myself to, this, to the repository so that we can better help you if you get stuck uh, on any source code issues. Uh, so yeah, so that'll be the first assignment. Um, uh, next week, we'll, uh, we'll start tackling uh, other software engineering uh, topics such as requirements. Uh, so we'll talk about uh, you know, the importance of, uh, uh, of gathering requirements, uh, the challenges of, uh, of, of uh, eliciting requirements, different te techniques of, uh, of require, uh, getting, gathering requirements for multiple different stakeholders, uh, the complexity, the types of requirements, whether they're functional requirements, non-functional requirements, and then how do you document them using use case analysis, uh, identifying the different actors, identifying all the, you know, uh, what are all the steps that, uh, to implement a particular feature of the, of the project. Uh, so that's, that's the, um, uh, on, on, uh, uh, on Tuesday. Uh, we'll, we'll then, in, in, uh, on, on Friday, we'll, um, we'll document those requirements as use cases. Uh, and, and then we'll implement some of those requirements in, in code, right, using, uh, you know, extending uh, the implementation that uh, you get you had, you had started in the previous assignment, you'll extend a little bit further by by you know documenting a couple of use cases and then in actually implementing them in uh, in, in Java. Okay. Um, all right. So that, that's our requirement. So then on uh, week three, uh, we'll uh, we'll talk about planning. Uh, uh, you know, having identified uh, requirements. Uh, we need to be able to plan, right? Um, we need to identify uh, what, what should we do first, right? We, need, we know we need to do all these things, right? Where should we start, right? Well, certainly we don't have infinite time, we don't have infinite money, we don't have infinite resources, so certainly we need to prioritize, right? We have to say, well, this thing is more important than that thing, right? And, and then list them in order of priority of what should we do first, right? And that's the whole point of planning. Right, dealing with a scarce resource of time and money, right, and resources. So what, what do you prioritize? So planning, we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll introduce uh, JIRA as, the, um, uh, as, as one of the industry standards of, of, ha of uh, dealing with uh, creating, um, uh, managing Scrum uh, boards and teams and tasks and keeping track of what is, what is the status of each one of these, of these issues assigned to different folks. Uh, so for that, I'll need the CCIS, I'll need the CCIS accounts from you, right, to create 
uh, an account for you and then invite you uh, for, for you to be able to create boards, create tasks, assign them to other folks, uh, and, and, and run a Scrum. All right. uh, uh, so, so that week, that the assignment will focus on that, right? Uh, you'll, give, you'll be giving a, um, a, pro a project statement. We'll, you'll be giving a couple of uh, paragraphs. And, and you'll, you'll need to identify requirements in the use cases. And then you'll need to plan uh, based on the, uh, the specification. You'll plan you know, the different, the different uh, things that need to be built. Um, you know, any, any risk that you might identify. For instance, you might think, you might uh, identify that, hey, I don't know Java. That's a risk. Right? I don't know SQL. That's a risk. Right, that uh, that could that could uh, f um, you know impact you being able to deliver. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Um, to to be able to standardize the grading, uh, we had we had to spe uh, 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 agree on a particular stack. Other otherwise, you know, the uh, it would have been very very hard to uh, normalize the, the 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 grading. Yeah. Yes. The, uh, so what we're going to do is uh, Java in the middle tier. Uh, we use MySQL in the, as a database and React in the front end. So that's, uh, and, and again, uh, there'll be a different distrib uh, very uneven distribution of skills across. Some folks will be more, um, uh, more adept at the front end, and they would prefer to do that. And some folks would prefer to do some uh, middle tier or some uh, more uh, database and back end. Uh, ideally. In the group of nine in an organization, uh, ideally you would have you know, three really good front end folks, some really three good uh, and uh, middle tier folks, and some good data modeling folks in there as well, some architect folks in there. Uh, probably will be uh, more uneven than that. Okay, uh, and so that those are risk factors, right? That are common in any team, right? A, a team. Uh, usually, you know, uh, if they stay long enough in a particular organization, they'll go through several iterations of multiple stacks, right? And you know, maybe perhaps they were at jQuery at some point. Uh, then they made the wrong decisions of going Angular, uh, and then later they moved on to uh, React, right? Having gone through that history on multiple stack, uh, multiple front ends, and same thing, uh, they might have gone through uh, relational databases for the first five to 10 years that they were at a particular organization. And now it's all uh, you know, no SQL, uh, non-relational databases. So everybody now is doing Mongo and doing whatever. So it's not, not uncommon that teams uh, go through several uh, multiple stacks as they go. And they have to reinvent and, and relearn uh, many of these things. But nevertheless, in, in all projects, all these risks and, are, and all these factors are included in the planning. Right, that you'll need uh, a week or so uh, to pick up certain, certain, uh, uh, certain technologies. Now, we'll try to minimize those, those disparate skills throughout the teams by giving you as much code as possible. Right, because the focus of this course is not the code. Right, the focus is applying software engineering uh, solutions to deciding how you build things. Okay? So we'll give you the Java middle tier. We'll give you uh, some of the front end, right? We'll give you the the relational tables and SQL uh, as much as, as as much as we can, all right? Uh, to minimize the uh, the uh, disparate skill distribution that it will, it will be inevitable, all right? All right. So planning. Um, all right. So we'll do a Jira there. Uh, then we'll we'll spend a week on designing. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, the importance of designing. You know, before you start coding, you know, design something, right? You can, you can design the class diagrams, uh, the dependencies between multiple packages, uh, you know, the architecture of, uh, of, uh, you know, that, uh, of, of RESTful services that are being requi requested and JSON objects that are being returned at the different, ta at the different tiers. Uh, so so we'll, we'll spend a week uh, talking about design. Uh, you know, creating UML class diagrams, sequence diagrams, uh, relational tables, ER, ERDs, and and then and then uh, so that would be maybe the first the first half of the week. Uh, the next uh, half of the week will uh, at the end of, on Friday we'll actually code something. We'll create a Java class, 
uh, we'll create some controllers, we'll create some tables, we'll map the data model to uh, a table, we'll, we'll expose it as a, relational, as, a, um, as a RESTful service, and we'll build something together uh, on, on, on that, that Friday, right? Um, uh, and, and so you, you'll, you'll, and you'll, you'll be giving a feature, and each one of them, each, each assignment, you'll, give, you'll be giving an, a new feature that your team will work on together, okay? Uh, and for that feature, uh, you'll apply all the concepts that you've been learning you know, up to this point, yes? Right, for that feature, you'll apply, you know, you'll apply, you know, documenting what the requirements are. Uh, making sure you understand that this is what we're building. Uh, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll apply some planning. It says, okay, well, I need, I need, a, I need this class, and I need uh, this controller, and I need this table, and I need... And so you'll create all the plans, right, of what is it that, you, that needs to be built, and you'll assign them to different users, different developers in your team. You know, who's responsible for who's going to do what. Uh, so you, you do some planning, and then you'll actually uh, design and implement some data model, right? Uh, so, so these skills, these skills are cumulative. You know, as you go to the next assignment, you'll be expected to apply the skills that you've acquired up to that point. Yes. Um, we're going to be running the the project uh, uh, using Scrum, using Jira, uh, and we're going to be running as one week sprints. Right? So every week it'll be a sprint. Uh, at the beginning of the week, you'll, you'll, you'll identify what, uh, what the different tasks are. You're going to be loading the sprint with those tasks. You'll start the sprint. You'll assign them to folks. And as you, as you go through the week, you'll be moving those tasks from to-do uh, to um, uh, testing uh, or, or done, or in progress, in QA, or, or done. You'll be moving it through uh, the different uh, software development lifecycle. Uh, in the, the, the week number five, it's, uh, we're going to continue the design, right? but we're going to focus now on the front end, designing the front end. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll uh, use some HCI best practices. Anybody done HCI? Uh, some folks have done HCI, okay. Uh, so, so we're going we're gonna to cover uh, some of those same topics. Um, best practices for designing user interfaces. We'll do some wire, uh, wireframes. Uh, and, um, uh, so we'll, we'll cover that, the, f the first, and how to document those wireframes. Uh, that Friday, uh, that, that'll give us a chance to actually build a user interface, right? We'll, we'll introduce React. Uh, we'll do a crash course on React. Uh, if you already know React and you feel comfortable and, and you feel like using you know, features such as Redux or you know, other state management um, frameworks and whatnot, feel free to use them, but they're not required for this course. All right, we're going to be doing the bare minimum. All right, it's not a web course, uh, so you know the very minimum things that you need to know about React. Okay, if you're if you're already familiar, feel free to to use other libraries. Okay, if you're confident enough to do that, but it's not required. Okay, uh, so yeah, so so we'll build a small, you know, tiny little bit single page application. Uh, it probably act, uh, hitting. Of the web service that we built the previous week, right? Um, you know, so that it retrieves data from the server and then dynamically uh, re um, displays this in the in the front end. Um, uh, so, so you'll build some some. You know, you'll apply some of the. You'll you'll implement some of the wireframes uh, that you'll be designing in this week. You'll be then implementing them uh, using React and HTML and whatnot. Right? All throughout, these, all throughout these assignments, we'll, we'll, ha we'll, be, we'll be feeding you new s development skills, right? So maybe we'll, uh, you know, the first week, like this week, we'll do a simple hello world HTML document. You know, next week we'll say, okay, well, let's, let's add a hello world React uh, component, right? And so we'll, each week we'll, add, we'll, we'll feed you uh, more and more skills that you'll need later on, okay? Um, like for instance, this week we'll we'll introduce uh, some uh, RESTful services and some some little uh, small hello world data models. All right, so user ex uh, user experience. So the next the next uh, couple of weeks, uh, we're going to be focusing on testing. Uh, the first the f uh, the first week number six, we'll we'll talk about testing in general. You know the importance of testing, 
uh, making sure that if you got something already working, you want to make sure that it stays working, right? That you don't inadvertently break something that used to work, right? That, uh, uh, that you might have already been testing, but you might have been doing it manually, right? You, you know, you're coding, you're, and it's not working, and, and you're running it again, and it's not behaving just right. So you've been testing manually, right? So I know that these are the inputs, I know that these are the outputs, and you know that, that you're almost getting there, right? You're measuring the difference between what you want and what it's actually happening. We want to automate that, right? We want to make sure that uh, once it's working, it stays working. So we want to identify what the boundaries of the requirements are uh, of the algorithm that for these inputs, we want these outputs, right? And when, and, when we, and when we achieve that the algorithm does that, we want to test it to verify that it tests all the boundaries, you know, the, the, um, the initial conditions, the, the end conditions, and make sure we identify what the, what, the, uh, uh, what the area is, or the silhouette, or the perimeter is of what is considered to be a, the correct uh, uh, behavior. So first, we'll, we'll focus on functional testing, uh, meaning you know, that we'll, t we'll, we'll focus on the smallest possible test unit that you, could, that you can verify, right? maybe just a function. Right? I know that the, these are the inputs of the function. I know that the, these are the output of the functions. And we'll just test each function, the behavior of that function. So we'll, we'll use JUnit to, uh, uh, to define the, 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 uh, the unit test for functions and whatnot. Uh, the following week, week number seven, uh, we'll focus on a different uh, uh, testing aspects. We'll talk about structural testing. Uh, so your algorithms will have lots of loops and, and if statements all over the place. And, uh, and, and depending on the inputs, uh, to your algorithm, uh, your code will follow a particular branch or some other branch, yes? And we want to make sure that, that, uh, that uh, your tests are written in such a way that every single line of code in your algorithm is actually tested, right? You might have some in your, in your if statements, in your branches, certain, certain uh, branches that are fairly rare, right? And some other branches that are fairly frequent, very common. We want to make sure that you don't only focus on the ones that are frequent and you neglect the ones that are rare. Right? We want to make sure that all the inputs, all the combinations of inputs, right, causes every single line of code to be executed and identify any problems that there might be with every single line of code. So that, that aspect is called structural testing, or, or, uh, and, and, it, uh, and it, it, um, it generates a report of how much percentage of every single line of code has been tested. Right, and that's called code coverage, right? And your tests uh, might be designed so that only 80% of the lines of your source code has been tested, right? But there's still 20% that you don't really know, but because you don't have, you haven't, you know, you don't have any inputs uh, that actually force your the branch to go any particular way. So that might put into question whether you even need that source code, right? Because you can't think of a particular combination of inputs <laughs> that forces the code to go in a particular branch. Right? So why do you even have that code if it never executes? Right? Uh, so it must have, must have been mean something at some point, right? but it might be code that it's dead, or you don't need it anymore, you throw it away. Uh, so, so structural testing allows you to identify these, these issues. Uh, we'll start here, we'll, we'll start with uh, uh, requiring that now our source code uh, be, uh, may meet at least an 80% coverage. Uh, meaning that your, your tests should at least uh, walk through the 80% uh, of your source code, uh, which is, you know, it's, a, uh, it's not easy to do. Uh, it could be challenging. And what we'll do is that we're going to ratchet that up every week after that. Right? So next week, we'll ratchet that up to 82% coverage, and then 84% coverage, and then 86% coverage. Right? So every week, it'll get a little harder you know, until we hit 90%. Okay, 90% is, is a good coverage. Ideally, we would have 100% coverage. Right? That's uh, sometimes unrealistic. Um, uh, the following week, week number eight, um, so all this, all this testing is on the Java side, right? on the server side, on the back end side. Uh, we also need to test the front end. Right? We, we, you know, all this, uh, along all these weeks, we, you know, you'll be building you know, additional you'll be adding additional React components right, all throughout implement a particular uh, feature. And so at week number eight, uh, we'll focus on testing the front end as well. 
Okay? More and more, the front end has become more and more complex. Uh, that uh, the layout is complex, the behavior as you click here and click there, the user interface behaves one way or the other, and we want to be able to test that as well. Uh, so it's the same unit test that you wrote for the back end, we also need to create unit tests for the front end. Right? So for that, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be uh, talking about Just, <coughs> Just uh, as a uh, framework for testing uh, React uh, applications. Okay? Uh, so all, 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 all this time, you'll be running these tests manually. Right? You'll, you'll be running using Gulp or using Maven or whatever to run your tests and build. Later on, uh, when we come back from the break, um, week nine, um, after we have our midterm, um, week nine we have the spring break. Uh, when we come back from the spring break, we're going to revisit uh, all this manual testing that we've been doing. Right? Up to this point, uh, we've been doing the builds, the testing, the, the packaging, the deployment. Uh, we'll, we'll have been doing it all manually. Right? And, uh, and what we want to be able to do is automate all that okay? so, that, uh, we, you know, so that we don't have to uh, uh, inadvertently do something wrong or, or forget a step. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be introducing continuous integration. Continuous integration looks to uh, automate as much as possible the, uh, the grudgery of having to run the tests, uh, doing the builds, all the packaging, all, and the deployment that, that, that then goes on to Heroku or AWS. Right? So that you could focus only in your source code right? and make sure that you have your tests right, that run automatically uh, and, and you only get reports if something went wrong. Right? That, uh, that uh, some new code that you introduce you know, breaks a particular test. Right? And, and you get a notification saying you know, something went wrong. You, you have a regression. Something that used to work no longer works. Uh, so you want to automate that as much as possible uh, so that uh, um, you know, folks, folks are, are working in different features and they, they get notified if something goes wrong. Uh, now notice that, uh, again, uh, every single, every single uh, skill that we learn right, is, you know, uh, is inherited in the next assignment. So by the time you get here, you still need to do requirements, you still need to do planning, you still need to do um, uh, functional tasks, you know, structural tasks. So every sprint, you do the same thing, repeat uh, over and over. Right? Uh, obviously, we don't have all the skills. We're going to be acquiring each skill each week. Right? But once you are in a production, uh, when you're working in an actual uh, team, Right, this is something that you would do every every sprint. Right, uh, for this uh, uh, for this project, we're going to be choosing one sprint, uh, one week sprints. Uh, I don't like one week sprints. Uh, I, I feel they're way too short. Uh, but uh, we are in academia. Uh, we only have 14 weeks to do this, uh, so we're going to have to, uh, you, know, you know, bite small, you know. <laughs> uh, 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 deal with small bites, you know, some, you know, small increments every 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 sprint. Right, so we'll we'll keep every uh, uh, everything that you need to build that particular week small enough that you can actually complete it that week. All right. Ideally, I would prefer two weeks. Um, I think three weeks is too long, uh, but I think two weeks is nice. Uh, it's you know, it's it's, it's nice and long. Uh, when you have small sprints, you, uh, one of the problems with small sprints you have a lot of overhead. Right. That uh, there's there's a lot of Okay, a new, a new, uh, something new feature. I didn't have enough time to even think about this. Right, so we'll, we'll keep that portion of thinking of what you need to think about uh, small enough that you can focus on, this, on the software engineering portion of this. Uh, also, the, um, one of the skills that uh, we're going to be looking uh, later today or perhaps on Friday uh, is Git. Uh, I just want to show hands how, how, how many folks are familiar with Git or feel confident. Okay, would you, folks who consider themselves expert at Git? Okay, M much less, all right. Uh, so ideally, we, we're gonna be using Git all throughout the semester. We're gonna be covering some of the basics this week. Uh, but ideally, what, what will happen is that you're gonna be working in teams, yes? And, and every week, uh, you know, whatever feature is assigned to you, uh, you're gonna be creating your own little feature branch where you're gonna be doing your work in that isolated branch. You're going to be doing all your, your, your testing, and once you know that you're, uh, you're good, 
right? You, you, add, you, you push it to a centralized Git repository and ask other folks right, in the team to look at it you know, and to review your code, you know, to look over your shoulder and say, Is, does this make sense or not? Right? Uh, because that, this source code doesn't really belong to you. Right? The source code belongs to the team right, and eventually belongs to the organization. Okay? And this source code will outlive you you know, way after you've left this organization. Somebody's going to look at this, and somebody else is going to have to own that piece of source code. Yes? So as much as we can do to make the life easier for everybody else, the better. Right? We're looking to improve the efficiency of the team, not of you in particular. Okay? Uh, and, you know, a lot of the things that we're going to be doing in, uh, as working in teams is something that we wouldn't do you know, for ourselves, you know, following a particular naming convention, following a particular file structure, you know, following a lot of conventions that are, are grudgery. You know, they're pain, but it's because we're in a team. You know, if you were just you and your buddy, you would not be applying any of these, uh, any of these things, right? But because we are in a team and the source doesn't belong to you specifically, we need to follow structure, right? We need to, because somebody else is going to join the team, we're going to have to be able to explain to them how the source code is, is organized what the naming conventions are, yes? Uh, so, so whenever you are working a particular feature or, or piece of a feature, right, you create what is called a pull request right, in, in Git, and you'll, have, and you'll assign it to your team members to look at it. Right? And they will comment on that source code and say, oh, why don't you instead use this name? Or why don't you, you know, add this documentation? Uh, or maybe you should rename this variable this way. Why don't you use linked list instead of an array? And they'll, they'll comment right, to your, uh, on your source code, yes? And it'll be your responsibility to argue why you would or not, or, or provide an, an alternate solution right, to those comments. At the end of this back and forth right, of this code review process, uh, the whole team agrees that your source code is good, and they're going to merge it into the master branch of the, of the repository. Right? And everybody now is making themselves responsible for that source code. That source code no longer belongs to you, not belongs to the, to the team. Right? If somebody's going to say, yes, this source code is good, that means that they're making themselves responsible for that source code. They're saying that, yes, I am willing to debug this if this breaks tomorrow. Even if it's not my source code, even though somebody else wrote it, I am willing to make myself responsible for this source code. Make sense? So the code, code, code review process right, allow, you know, it, it tends to increase the quality of the source code you know, over time. Make sense? Right? So, so if we're going to be using Git right, to manage all this process of me working individually, then give it a, 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 a submitting to, to, for other folks for approval, right? and then merging it into a master, and then you know, automating with a continuous integration automating the build process and testing and deploying it. Make sense? Right. Again, working in teams is messy. Uh, planning, design, continuous integration. Uh, right, then week uh, 11, we'll, work, we'll talk about quality assurance. These are the, the folks that uh, will take a, um, a use case, right, uh, and document, documented use case of how the source, uh, how your software should work. Right? And then they, you know, they try to break it. They try to see if, indeed, they follow the steps that are documented. That if I click here and I click there, the following thing should appear or should disappear or should change. And they document any discrepancies from the documented way that it's supposed to work. Yes? Right? So, um, so quality assuring engineers, you know, they, they, they write all these, all these uh, test suites, test suits, right? And then they, uh, they implement those test suits. Uh, and so what we're going to do is that, we're going to talk about the, 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 the concepts of, of quality assurance, uh, and then we're going to try to automate it. Instead of manually somebody actually clicking through, uh, through your user interface, we're going to automate it. Uh, we're going to use Selenium. Selenium is an uh, open source um, uh, software that allows you to record you know, folks clicking on the screen, and then you can just run that as a script right? so that if some user interface used to work, you can verify that indeed that, that always works, that, you, that nobody broke it, right? that, or that if you introduce some source code, you didn't break, inadvertently break something that used to work. You can automate the runs of these, uh, of these scripts. Uh, we'll, we'll, 
now, now we're, we're working towards almost the, 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 the end of the course. Uh, and the teams might have been working on features that were somewhat independent of each other. Uh, you know, some folks might be waiting for other folks to finish their piece. Uh, they'll, have, they'll have some dependencies between, te between teams, right? And says, and, and you know, how do I, you know, how do I work if I don't have your piece that I'm, I, that I depend on, right? Uh, so how do you work on, how do you uh, get around that? Uh, and 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 how do I test my piece if you're not done with your piece? Right? So we're going to look at being able to mock or, or generate, you know, um, uh, dummy data that you could use uh, so that your test could run independently of of things that you are dependent on. You know, how do you break it up in such a way that we don't have, uh, we're not waiting on each other, right? So that we can work independently of each other, but at some point we need, we, need, we need to integrate. We need to connect these two. Meanwhile, we need to be able to work independently. Uh, so at this point, we'll, we'll start thinking about how to integrate all these disparate systems that uh, have been being implemented independently in different teams, bringing it together and, and, uh, and making it work together, right? How to test it, you know, how to test the fact that if I click this button, you know, all the way through to the RESTful service, all the way through the data model, all the way down to the database, you know, a particular record is inserted. You know, how do you test the entire stack? Um, the, the last two uh, weeks uh, are going to be uh, mainly focused on finishing the project. Right? We're going to break out into, into teams, into organizations here in class, uh, and the TAs and myself are going to be here to, to help you in any, any integration processes that, that you might need uh, and, and help you out. Uh, how do you, you know, how to have all the teams work together and integrate uh, all the disparate systems that you've been working for for a while? You you you'll have integrated quite a bit up, you know, by the time you get here, right? But I'm sure there'll be lots of loose ends here and there uh, that uh, that that need to be tied and polished, uh, and lots of bugs that will have that will be in our backlog that we need to clean up and harden. So so this will be probably bug fixing and. You know, integration and and hardening, hardening the. Uh, uh, also, uh, typically happens that uh, you know you might have taken a shortcut early on because maybe a requirement was misunderstood, uh, or you took a particular direction of implementation, and you said, oh, you know what, I should have done it this way instead of that other implementation, but you I, you don't have time to get to it right now, right? So that typically is is uh, uh, referred to uh, as a technical debt, meaning. It's, uh, it's something that you know you have, that, that uh, there's a better implementation. You don't have time right now because you have a deliverable, okay? But you know it's a debt that, that sometime you're going to have to pay, right? And the bigger and the longer time you wait, the bigger that debt gets, right? With interest, right? So at some point you need to have a a sprint or two of just paying down that technical debt, right? That instead of uh, a link, uh, an array it should have been a linked list, right? Instead of uh, um, some you know uh, some uh, denormalized data model. It should have been a much more normalized data model, or something like that, right? And and so you have you have to plan ahead and say, hey, I need one sprint where I'm going to you know deal with all this technical debt. Right? Uh, then on week 15, we'll have the uh, the final uh, final exam. <laughs> um, and. Uh, uh, and that week also you'll you'll be dealing with finishing up uh, your project, uh, which will be due on Monday, April 22nd uh, at midnight. And the TAs and myself will be busy that week. Uh, that week will not be available. We'll be grading all the pro uh, all the projects. Uh, so so you know any any help that you might uh, need will have to be before that week, all right? Um, and we'll have one week to grade, and we'll have to have grades ready for Monday the 29th. And on the 30th, you, you should see the grades on my NEU. OK? All right, All right. any questions on the? So this, this is the, 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 um, the topics uh, that we're going to be covering throughout the semester. Any questions? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we're going to be building something uh, a, a, uh, that looks like um, that implements something like uh, Ng's List. Anybody Ng's List? No. Uh, Ng's List is a website where you have a marketplace of folks that uh, sell 
uh, services, right? Services as in home care services. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll clean your house, right? And, and depending on the number of rooms, uh, uh, this is what I charge per room, right? Uh, so folks can register and offer their services. You know, I can, I can walk your dogs, I can, uh, I can, I can clean your house, uh, I'm a plumber, I'm an electrician. Um, there's tons and you know, thousands and thousands of different services that folks can, can, uh, can offer, right? So this will be a marketplace uh, where folks can, f can search for folks around in, in a particular geographical area. Uh, and each type of service will have different questions, right? If, a, if, it's a, if I'm going to clean your house, I'm going to ask you, uh, how many rooms does your house have, right? How many square feet? Do you have pets? Uh, do, you just, do, you, do you just want cleaning or do you want me to do also laundry? Uh, so you know, each, each service will have different questions, yes? Uh, if, it's, uh, if it's plumbing, right, uh, th it'll have different types of questions, yes? Uh, so we'll build an application that allows you to manage all these things. Right? Some folks will, will deal, some, some teams will deal with all the user management, right, creating users, um, registering user, you know, setting, uh, assigning roles, a profile, a login, registration, all the user admin stuff that needs to be built. So one team will focus on that set of features. Uh, another team will focus on implementing uh, a, all these, uh, all the different types of services. Since each service has different questions, somehow we need to manage that, right? Be able to create new services, add the different questions for different services, yes? Uh, and, uh, um, and, and another team will, will deal with uh, the marketplace, right? Of being able to search for services, uh, being able to answer these questions and identify uh, buyers and sellers, right? And, and match them, you know, based on the questions that they answer uh, and, uh, and, and, and different criteria. And then, you know, setting up a contract saying, okay, well, I will be at your house so-and-so day for you know, four hours or eight hours doing whatever, right? And this is what I'm going to charge you, right? And managing the process of that. Make sense? All right. Uh, one one uh, twist is that uh, every five sprints, every five sprints, a team that has been working on a set of features is going to abandon those, those features and is going to be inherited by another team. So team number two is going to inherit the user management and team number two, three is going to be inherit all the services. Uh, so this is going to allow us to talk about legacy. Right? Most of the cases, mo most of the work of uh, software engineering that you're going to be doing is going to be uh, managing or developing somebody else's code. You know, right? Most of us don't like that. <laughs> most of us would prefer working on something that's from scratch. Yes? So, uh, so ideally, each team will be uh, working on, this, on the entire stack, right? So team one uh, will be responsible for everything, right? The front end, the middle tier, and the database, right? Um, uh, and team two as well, and team three as well. Uh, so that's going to be challenging because it's not, there's not, probably it's not going to be an even distribution of skills all throughout, okay? Which is normal. This, this happens. Uh, we just need to plan ahead, you know, being able to acquire some of these skills. All right. So yeah, so team two will inherit the, the, the features. They'll, they'll, they'll need to be some time put in the plan for doing knowledge transfer, right? where team two sits with team one explaining right, the, the design, the classes, right? All, uh, explaining how, what the tables are, what the services are. Very, very common right? that, uh, that you work on somebody else's work and all the challenges that go around with that. Oftentimes, you'll need to go back and borrow somebody from a previous team to come and help you. Yes? And the team will need to put that in the plan, that I lost my UI person. I'm only going to have them for 70% this, this, uh, this sprint, because I'm going to have to lend my user interface guy right, for 30% of uh, their time is going to be helping team three, you know, getting up to speed on their piece, which is totally fine. That needs to be put in the plan. Yes? That's a very, very common issue uh, in, uh, in, uh, in software engineering. Yes? Yeah, no. So, so uh, the, every team, every uh, organization is working on the same product. 
So it will be eight versions of the same product. Okay? Uh, obviously, they're not going to be the same. Right? The wireframes are going to be different. Uh, they're they're going to be, uh, uh, you know, you'll, you're, you're free to change the look and feel and what, you know, how the actual implementation is, right? Uh, but it'll be, yes, it'll be eight versions of the same thing. Yep. Uh, I was thinking of having, uh, like, teams of five uh, working on different features, but we would need a really, really big project to break it up into, you know, eight teams or, you know, you know, 15 teams. And that would be a nightmare. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about that. Yes? Um, how will we be building up this organization? So, will be doing it or will be so Piazza has a feature where you can uh, start looking for teammates, right? And I encourage you to first use Piazza to do most of that work of identifying who your buddies are, who you want to work with. Uh, chances are that. Uh, many of the folks that you're going to be working are folks you've never worked with, which is very common in uh, in real teams, and which is fine. Uh, but yes, uh, first use uh, um, uh, Piazza to do most of that work. Next week, there'll be a form, an official form that will go out uh, that uh, you have to fill out and say what the what the organization name is, uh, what the team names are, and who are the who are the uh, team members of each team. Okay. Uh, so that will be official. Uh, I'm sure there will, there, you know, each team will have some some minor changes back and forth of, you know, oh, I want to change teams. That will happen inevitably. We'll have to deal with that on a case by case. Uh, yes. Are the um, teams created cross section? Or no, within the section. Yeah, we we've we've tried across sections before, and it's a an administration nightmare. You know, keeping oh this section, this team over here with that other team in this other section is, and we're just not going to do that this time. It just makes it really, really hard. Yes. When it comes to exams, um, will those be focused just on like the theoretical stuff that we're learning in class? Yes. No, no, it'll be all theoretical. Uh, yeah, I, I might give you a snippet of code, uh, but it's nothing that you haven't seen. Yeah. If it's not in the slides, uh, it's not in the exams. Anything else? Yes? So just to clarify, every organization has nine people. Yes. It's three teams of three. Yes. So we have to find our two other small team members as yes. well as two other teams of three to form Yes, exactly. Uh, and where you cannot resolve it, we'll resolve it for you. I just want to give you a chance to first uh, you know, uh, choose who, who your buddies are. And, and wherever we can't resolve it, we'll just have to randomly uh, put folks in the missing, missing slots. OK? All right? All right. So yeah, so please try to do that this week. Identify who your teams are. Next week, we'll formally ask you to settle that. OK? <laughs>